Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Lukash, and today we're going to be talking about grammars. Uh, this is going to be probably a little bit of a long video, but grammars are really important to this piece and you have to do a lot of different stuff with them. I'll try to run over, at least with some sort of mild comprehensivity, uh, what you need to know about grammars for this piece set. The first thing I think you need to do is like generate a parse tree from a grammar. And this parse tree is something with nodes and leaves. Leaves, 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 leaves. I think leaves. Not, I'm not good at grammar. Ha ha ha. Okay. Um, but we also remember that a grammar is sort of like a regular expression in that it helps you generate uh, stuff. It does. It's not a DFA. A DFA accepts languages. Grammars help you make expressions, languages. I might be using the terminology a little bit wrong, but the idea is that grammars make stuff. DFAs accept accept stuff, uh, regular expressions also make stuff. Um, so the only real question in this parse tree problem is how do we know when to make a node and when to make a leaf, right? Uh, and that's based on our terminal states. So remember a, a node has uh, I think like a label and then children. I might be using it, might be the wrong words, but um, and this label is always just going to be the state. So we're always going to start, at least for this, with node s, right? So you probably want to like single out what's the start state. Here, s is the start state. And then we're going to have, uh, you know, uh, there are two things here. So we're going to have a list of children, right? List. Now, only if these are terminals, like things that end, are we going to make a leaf? Um, otherwise, we need to make a node. Because we can't say something like leaf np. That, you know, np has to be replaced by others. You know, it has to be followed by something that np represents. Uh, anyway. So here I'll say list, and then maybe I'll, I'll pick a specific, you know, like, a, this won't be a general for all, all parse trees, but uh, we have np here, so that's going to be a node. Node np, and then here I'm going to take. I'm going to pick. Uh, also, it's det n, right? So here my children are going to be list uh, mm -hmm. So det also not a terminal. I don't think n not a terminal. So list more nodes. Node Debt. Debt, I think, A is a terminal. It's a leaf. It's something you can end on. So, debt A. Let me make sure I'm getting the syntax of this parse tree right. Write things with lists and everything. Um, looks. Close enough. And nodes need to have lists as the children. Right. Oh, so a little bit off. This A is going to be a leaf. Okay, so here we have leaf A. Okay, so this leaf closes. This node under NP needs uh, an N. So I have another node N, which can be something like, let's just say mouse again, another terminal. So that's going to be a leaf. Mouse. Wait, did I have enough parentheses here? Okay. Um, now, so I've closed this node, this node. That's all that I have under NP. So now I can close my NP node. Uh, and now I need a VP, right? So I have another. Oh, I'm standing right in front of everything, aren't I? Genius. Uh, I have another node. Oh boy. Wow, I've seen that for a while. Quality video production. Node VP. Uh, VP is going to be, well, we got a lot of options. So here are three options for VPs. Um, I'm gonna pick, a, I guess, a somewhat simple one just to keep this easier. Uh, I'll pick VTNP. So node VP. We know we're gonna have list VT. Uh, it's going to be another node. So list node 
vt, uh, and then vt can be something like chaste. Uh, and then another node, np, something like, uh, how about, oh, so it's going to be another, it's not quite yet a leaf. Oh, right, so this, okay, a little bit, a little bit messy here. Chase is a leaf. Here, np is not yet, we're not at a leaf, we're going to have a node, but it is going to be a list, with, um, let's make the cat. So those are going to be leaves. Um, yeah. So this is going to be my debt, which is, uh, oh boy, wait a second. Children are oh the children of, of NP are two leaps, right? Yeah, same thing I did up here. I don't know why I'm being silly about it. List node debt leaf the node uh, and Okay, so the sentence we got from this, uh, took a second, was the a uh, mouse chased the cat. So all of our leaves, right? Let me check that you can see what I did down there. Looks uh, good, I think. Yes. Okay, um, so basically it's a recursive process, right? Every time I found something that was a terminal, like uh, a or mouse, or chased, or the, or cat. I said, hey, that's a terminal. Uh, I'm just gonna make a leaf. Every time it was not a terminal, I said, well, that's gonna have to be a node, right? Okay, and then when I'm making another node, something like, I see a VP, or, or sorry, an NP, when I'm making my node, so NP, uh, I have to make each of these into or I run my process recursively on both debt and on n. Um, and since those are not terminals, then we'll make more nodes for those. Um, when I look up those, I'll get mouse and or a and mouse, which I'll see are terminals, and I'll make leaves for those within. Okay, so highly recursive process uh, where we start with s, we branch out into these two things, uh, np and vp which branch out into more things. Anyway, I hope that process made some sense. Uh, the recursive code is really not that hard, it's just getting the idea of how this thing is made that I think confuses some people um, and what the base case and recursive cases are. So base case leaves, recursive case nodes. I'm gonna erase this and we're going to talk about how to make a DFA from a grammar. So this is really not that difficult. I think conceptually it's difficult. Um, but the way I would do it is to convert it into the states that we looked at kind of in our last video about DFAs. So uh, you want to make a DFA that accepts anything from this language. I'm going to draw it out in terms of these kind of circular lily pad states. So we'll just call this S kind of arbitrarily. It's the thing that we start with. In S, uh, another thing I think that makes DFAs hard is remember that they're taking in like the output of this, like a sentence, like the cat chased the dog. And you're like, how do I know what to do if I see the? Like, there are so many different options here for what could follow the, and so many different options for what could follow that. Again, I think this DFA will help simplify all of those things. I'm gonna get a little bit smaller because there are a few of these. So here's S, okay? In S, I know I'm going to see an NP. Uh, and an NP always starts with a debt, and a debt is either A or the, okay? So if I encounter A or the, probably need a separate rule for these two things. If I encounter A or the, I'm going to start looking for an N. We'll call this N, okay? 
in the end state, there are only a few things I'm looking for. I'm looking for mouse, cat, or dog, right? Mouse, cat, or dog. And in all of these cases, I know I have to be followed by a verb phrase, right? Uh, because I had, here are my debts, here are my ends, that makes up my NP. Here, my VP uh, is going to be made up, oh, I just got confused, did I miss something up here? Is there a PN anywhere? Check that I copied this down right from the homework. Oh, I missed one. Okay, I'm gonna add it in uh, over here. <laughs> Oops, NP can also be PN. Okay, I hope you didn't catch that before. Or maybe you did. If you did, congrats. Um, anyway, so. I lied a little bit, an NP can be A or the, or it can be a PN, which is it. Okay, so here we can also encounter it. When we encounter an it, we're going to be looking for something uh, very similar to what we're looking for after we encounter mouse, cat, dog, right? Because both of those represent our NP here. And after our NP, we need a VP. So both of these all have to go to the same place state looking for a VP. Okay, I'm looking for a VP. There are three sort of conditions here for what a VP can be. So a VP can be a VI, a VT NP, or a V3 that S. Uh, and these all have different verbs, right? VIs, VTs, and V3s are three different categories of verbs. Um, and I need they all are expected to be followed by different things, so I need different kind of sets of states for them. Uh, I'll make this, we'll call our uh, VI state, call this VT, call this V3. To get into state VI, we need uh, either slept or swam. And then what follows a VI? Well, a VI is my entire VP, right? Like NP, VP, VP goes to VI. VI is slept, slept is a terminal, right? So we finish after VI. VI is an accepting state of my DFA. VT is not an accepting state. It must be followed by an NP, which we've noted previously is either it or uh, a the but it cannot be followed by a noun. So I can't just say, hey, this, you know, this wants an NP. Let's go back up here where we're also looking for an NP. No good because it's a, it's a different scenario. Earlier that NP could be followed by things. Here we're looking to have an NP and then stop. So I'm going to say, I don't know if you can see, so I'm gonna draw a step over here that looks like NP2 um, and it accepts, if it sees an it, or uh, in it, then it goes to some accepting state. And if it sees a or the, it goes to a state looking for um, an n. Again, can't go here because it can't be followed by a verb phrase, right? Because here there's nothing following it. So this noun, if it sees a correct noun, mouse, cat, dog, goes to another accepting state, some accepting state, okay? V3s are a little different because they can loop back around with this S, right? So again, in a V3, we still have to look for some verbs. Uh, I'm gonna, this is not the best diagram ever, uh, but the verbs that we accept here for V3s are dreamed and believed. And those will take us to a state where we look for the word that. We must see the word that in this state. And when we see the word that, what are we gonna start looking for? 
an entire new sentence, right? Okay, so this is my full DFA sort of diagram. And if you think about it, this shouldn't be that hard to translate into code, right? Because each of these words in between things represents one rule. One rule that says like, if we see an it in state S, then change state to BP. If we see uh, A in state S, change state to N. If we see a swam in state VP, go to VI, right? As long as you name all the states differently, make sure you carefully think about what your terminal, uh, your accepting states are. So we said VI over here, uh, and these things over here, I think 